What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another live oil painting session. We are going to change up the schedule a little bit and start doing these streams a little bit more frequently like we did a couple years ago. Uh, so what I have here is just a standard cotton canvas that's mounted onto a panel. It is untoned, so I'm gonna go ahead and start toning it right now. And I'm using Cobra Talons paint. So all I have to do is use a tad bit of water to thin out the paint, and that's all I'm gonna use. The reference is in the description box of this video, along with a second YouTube channel that I have recently started, where Hugo, my uh, trick dog, uh, Shiba Inu, uh, so more information about that later uh, But so what I'm doing here is I'm killing off the white and In a second I'm going to adjust my camera um, For all you camera folks out there, you know, it's kind of important to uh, Kill off as much of a big light thing in the camera sensors if you know what I mean uh, So feel free to ask any questions while I'm painting uh, Like I said the schedule is now going to be uh, for the foreseeable future will be 6 45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and We'll stream for about an hour an hour and a half. Maybe a little bit more. We'll see how it goes um, and uh, I will be doing primarily portraits. We're starting another Rembrandt uh, This one was suggested to me by Johnny one of my students uh, that just joined us on on patreon uh, links to my Patreon also in the description box of the video. Uh, so I'm thinning out the paint. This is the most I'm going to thin it out, by the way. I won't apply that much water to the, the surface. And, and what happens is it's going to get a little bit tacky, something that I call uh, pretend dry. And you can choose whatever color you want. Um, I'm choosing kind of like a dark gray because I'm gonna do kind of like an uh, underpainting-ish start. I'll include some color in it, yeah, but it's it's not gonna be like a full um, black and white. It's just gonna be perhaps a little bit of color for the skin tone and then just the gray for the background. And then next time uh, we'll go in and we'll add more more color nuances to it. But it's a relatively simple, uh, simple image angry <laughs> thanks yeah we chose this one together um you me april and, and johnny so thinning out the paint i'm just using a grayish purple that i got from cleaning up my palette um this is just a plexiglass palette this is my handheld palette that i use um, and i put it in the freezer whenever i'm done painting and uh, I just put some of the paint off to the side. Uh, links to the colors are in the description box of the video along with the links to the brushes. I'm actually going to be just using three colors. I, I have primarily just been using three colors. And I pre-mix my orange, my brown, and my green. But just red, yellow, uh, red, yellow, blue. And you'll see what I mean in a second about it does a pretend dry thing, which is very unique to the uh, to the water mixable. But I mean, you can use the same kind of process with traditional. To be honest, they're, they're basically the same thing. It just thins out with uh, with water. Okay, so now that I've killed off as much of the white as possible, I can now use this as an eraser brush. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to get a drawing color. So let's just use my brown and let's just use something grayish. Some kind of grayish brown. All right, so the top of the head is gonna be about there bottom of the chin or the facial hair, whatever, it's going to be about there. So I'm not going to paint the whole background. The background is kind of um, rather empty. So instead, I'm just going to focus more with the head 
but I will have some of the dark, as you're seeing, I'm already starting to guesstimate where it's going to fit. Um, some of the dark showing through. Dark of the facial hair, little angle for the eyes. And you can tell that we're kind of looking down at the model. So eye socket, nose, again, hairline. So again, a really useful thing about these paints. So you notice there's white paint on my hand. It's really simple to get off, um, a little bit easier than traditional. Um, just a little bit of water on my finger and this like basically falls off like it's like gone um it's so easy to clean up even if you have a little little mistake like that so if anybody watching this is not using oil paint because they're afraid that it's going to be too messy or they're afraid of the harmful toxins and lead and cadmium just just talk to me i will help you out All right, so figuring out where the head's gonna go. And I'm gonna use this opportunity now to switch brushes to a bigger brush. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions, um, anyone that's watching this live. I know this is the first time for this schedule, so it may be a little bit uh, strange for, for some of you. I used to do streams, I think at five in the past, um, but I decided we will do some late night stuff, late night streams. For those of you in the East Coast getting off of work around this time, hanging out with the family, having a glass of wine. All right, so now I'm filling in this dark. And I'm actually already kind of going for the color that I want. That's pretty close. That's, that's good enough. Yeah, just like Ingrid said, it's, it's easier to clean up than traditional, that's for sure. And yeah, you'll uh, be able to take better care of your brushes. So, I mean, not, not always the case. I mean, I have left some brushes out with, with the Cobra, but they are more forgiving if you leave them out for a couple of days. Uh, I've done that and I've been able to clean the brush. Okay, so pretty much already kind of got an idea of where everything's gonna fit. This facial hair is gonna be about there. Eye socket there. Gives me an idea of the proportions of his head. Now the facial hair is gonna connect all the way down here. I'm pretty much unifying the darks at this point. And now you'll see what I'm talking about, the pretend dry. So I can run my fingers across this and you can hear a scratchy sound. Some paint will come off, right? But here's the thing, as I apply this brush stroke, nothing comes off. And you can see I can dry brush now at this point. See how the brush is running out a little bit? So that is why I call it pretend dry. It pretends like it's dry which makes it easier because you don't lose your outlines that quickly. Uh, it's a little less messy um, than traditional, but again, it's, it's all the same thing. If you focus on your shapes, focus on their fundamentals, it's all the same. Just clean up is a little easier. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna keep this dark, but I'm gonna mix something for the lights now. And like I said, it's not gonna be a full um, 
it's not going to be a full monochrome I'm going to put in color. But I'm not going to go for the kill, so to speak, with the big planes and all that stuff. I'm going to be a little bit more meticulous uh, about how I put in the, the darks and the lights in terms of the initial color. For example, uh, this brush that I had for the background, and again, this is pretending like it's dry. Look at that. I, I can dry brush that. It is not coming off. See that? That's cool. Uh, so what I'll do is show how I can clean this brush and uh, So you can know I'm telling you the truth. There's the water thing You can just do that and yeah, sure some water can fall off but again, it's just water And you see you can already see right through it uh, And that's not even using the paper towel yet. It, it cleans so easily now let's go in with the paper towel. And that's almost fine. I could just leave that overnight, which of course I wouldn't do that. I would at least put it through the sink. Um, but anyway, now I'll use this brush to make something for the light. And um, I'm gonna use orange and blue. The blue that I'm using is not a fancy blue, it's just ultramarine blue. So orange and blue are complements. They neutralize each other off a little bit and it creates uh, a skin tone. Depending on how cool or how warm, you can adjust your orange and your blue. Of course you can make it more pink by adding red. So I'm just going to test this out. Like I said, pretend dry. That right there is as if I'm painting onto a dry layer. It takes some time to get used to. When I first used these in the past, I wasn't as comfortable. But I've been using them for a while now, and it's pretty much like I, um, I don't have to think about it anymore. I, I know how it's going to react. And you'll get to that point too with any materials. Just takes time. So again, any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. And uh, eventually we'll have Hugo make a little debut here. I've got a little streaming set up for him. So you can see him do some of his little, little tricks. And at this point I'm just guess guesstimating. Educated guesses. where everything is going to fit. Uh, but I do need a shadow brush, or at least a secondary value. So we're going to switch. Let's uh, switch to this one. Let's mix green and brown. Put in a little accent there. Little accent here. Putting in some planes. Now I'm pushing the red a little too far on purpose. I just want to see if I can add some variation to the color while it's this early. As you saw, I added some green to neutralize it a little bit. So let's just flatten this plane out a tad bit. And like I said, it's acting as if the 
layer underneath was dry. And it hasn't even been 20 minutes yet. Now you can see why I chose that darker tone because I can add right to it. I can use the tone itself to help me get the contrast between light and dark. So I'll work on this as many sessions as it takes, but I'll try to be a little bit more efficient with these paintings. So for anyone that's watching this live, I'll start with my basic little question that I always ask everyone, where in the world are you? I am, I used to say in Beltsville, Maryland, the last time I did one of these around this time. But now I'm in Alexandria, Virginia. Not a lot of art groups over here, but man, is the food good here. Throwing in some planes in there prematurely. I don't really need them, but I figure might as well paint them in there. false highlights there don't really need them like I said but just kind of helps me get a feel for what it'll eventually look now for the nose like I said, I'm going in kind of freely with the drawing. So obviously I know things like that are not going to be what it'll ultimately look like, but it helps me get a gauge for things. Now we're going to have kind of like a reddish dark for the lips, for the upper lip. Dark greenish, it's the lower lip, underneath of the lower lip. I kill off the red a little bit, I don't want it to be bright pink. Dark accents. That lean towards the red. Like I said, we'll have a bunch of brushes out. A bunch of brushes. Alright, I'm gonna check my stream. It's a little strange. 
I'm gonna post a question mark. Is anyone here? Could be my stream, the chat thing isn't working, which has happened in the past. I'm gonna throw in a sclera on both sides. And I would usually advise to be careful with this because now you can see it looks like he's half dead. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm throwing down shapes. I feel really comfortable. I know that it's going to look a little strange at first, but I know I can work with it. I'm not scared of it. Now I'm going to add some blue to this, neutralize it a little bit. It's important to do that because you don't want to paint straight blue. You don't want to paint straight out of the tube anything, even with the three colors that I'm using. I have a pretty broad variety of colors. Yeah, I apologize if anyone is asking me anything. I'm not sure. It's not showing up. As you, you can even see on my screen, you can see the comments. Just like it was set up before, everyone. I keep getting this white paint on me. Where is it coming from? coming from where I'm placing my brushes. I know, I was asking the same thing. <laughs> Where's everyone from? We've got like 10 of us here, so somebody's got to be somewhere. Or we're all phantoms. So I'm going to have a middle value. Hey, Christy, uh, thanks for commenting from North Alabama. Welcome, welcome.
like I said, I kind of go across the colors on the palette just so I don't have too pink of a color, add some kind of gray to it. Yeah, so when I say pretend dry this, I can now run my finger across it. This is not coming off. Like I said, it takes some getting used to, but it is, it, there's more benefits to it than, than limitations. And now it's really just all about light and shadow and the precision within the shapes of light and shadow. Precision. Precision over detail. Specificity within a limited number of shapes rather than sporadically throwing down a bunch of shapes for the sake of saying, look how much detail I can paint. Um, specificity. And patience. I usually don't talk about patience, but um, there's a lot of patience because there's some back and forth stuff that goes on, uh, especially in, when you're in the light and shadow stage. You have to be very patient, understanding that it does take time. It's not like a TikTok or it's gonna happen right away. Which by the way, my dog now has a TikTok. Um, that is a thing. Um, it, it's something that takes patience. Patience can be built. You may say, oh, I don't have the patience for this. I'll never have the patience for that. Patience is something that you can build over time. You build patience over time because you understand yourself, your process. Just like when you were in school, you knew how long a project would take you to complete. Hey Libertas, what's going on? I'm just over here rambling, waiting for someone to ask me any art related questions or ask me what my favorite pizza is or how old my dog is, or how many new tricks he has. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I didn't think I would do it today, but given the nature of this more kind of free start, um, freeing start, I guess I should call it, I'm going to, go in with more of a kind of sergeanty kind of look to it. I'm gonna kill off the background color uh, quickly. I feel like it's a little distracting that it's just a floating head. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to use this dark brush that we had used for this already. Have used for that. Let's do some stuff for the background. Uh, this is the water mixable Libertas. This is the water mixable. Alright, 
right, so let's go with the kind of grayish Rembrandt looking color. Grayish green Rembrandt looking color. So let's test it out first. See how close we can get it. Now it's that yellowish, which I'm sure happened just over time. But who knows? Yeah, this is the Cobra. Little chunk of dry paint there. Have a little bit more of an orangey quality to it, at least. It depends on what monitor you're looking at it from. So he's doing that Rembrandt thing that he usually does. There's light against the shadow and there's dark against the light, which is a very important thing to understand about Rembrandt. He was very particular about the uh, contrast within the values. And I'll thin out the paint a little bit for things like backgrounds, just so I can cover the space a little bit more. So I can neutralize any color that I want by adding a complement. So I'm going from a lot of oranges to blues in particular. There we go, that's that grayish kind of grayish brown Rembrandt looking color. Yeah, the paint spreads pretty good. I have no issues here. At least with that. Okay. It always provides some kind of clarity when you have the background blocked in. And it may not always present itself, like um, some issues in the drawing or whatever may not present itself until you put in the background. Thing grid. And then now we've entered the stage where I call uh, I call it the awkward stage. This is like the teenage stage of a painting. Um, and this is where we're starting to get to know who we are as a person, as an individual. We did we don't quite grow into our faces yet, or or we start to develop acne or whatever. Um, like this is the part in the, the the painting is now wearing braces and uh, has pimples and and uh, the voice is starting to squeak and stuff. Um, it's going through its adolescent phase, and every painting, especially a portrait painting and portrait painting in particular, like it, it's gonna look like in my opinion, it's just gonna look very weird, um, and it's gonna make you feel a little uneasy. Uh, at first in this stage and that's normal you develop more patience for this stage in a painting the more you do it uh, the more you understand it's just part of the process it's just part of the process So we've passed about the 35 minute, 36 minute mark. So we've got most of the important stuff down. Light and shadow is key. 
Uh, but I went in and killed off as much as I could with the background. I know that when I return to this, I'll be able to work directly with light over dark um, in any order, really. The paint doesn't sink in very much, and it's dry enough, even after 24 hours, that I could work on it, say, tomorrow if I wanted to. It doesn't do the things that uh, traditional paint does where it gets impossible to work on. Um, it gets so sticky that it just doesn't stick on. Uh, the, it lifts the paint sometimes, but this won't do that. And you saw I made a black with red and blue and whatever was already on the palette there. Hey Stephanie, how do I choose the background color? Um, in this case, I was trying to match as close as possible and I, I think I can still actually do a little more for it, but I was just trying to essentially just match what I saw there. Um, so for example, um, Rembrandt, he must have chose this, and I'd hate to speak for him, but he must have chose this color because, he, number one, the value. He wanted the chiaroscuro. Uh, he, he really looked up to Caravaggio and chiaroscuro back then, dark against light, was kind of a big thing. Um, but mostly I, I, I try to seek out neutrals and because I have just the three colors and then I pre-mixed the, uh, the brown, the orange, and the green, I have to go between the blues and the, um, the blues and the orange a lot. Let's get another brush. This is a very Rembrandt color that we're about to imitate here. This is Vermilion. It's an orangey, dead red. And you can still buy it. It's a mer mercury-based red. So proceed with caution if you do buy it. Uh, paints are not going to do you much harm if you're careful with them. So if you ever fancy you want to try the paints that Rembrandt used, they're still available. You can still find them. But I can substitute these colors just fine. I don't need them. I don't need the genuine stuff. You see, I'm putting green into red to neutralize. Like I said, complementary colors will neutralize themselves out and give me that kind of um, mercury looking vermilion color. And of course, a purist out there would say that's nowhere near vermilion. It's two shades, two green, two shades, two brown. Probably. But I don't care. It's close enough. I'm not a human photocopier. Okay, and he's got the light for his shirt over here. Lead white is kind of yellowish in the tint, so I added a tad bit of yellowish stuff to it. Tint it a little bit. 
Now there's a part under here that gets darker. So I'll paint that in there. Even though I don't think it really pertains much. So again, more green. So I can neutralize that red slightly, but not too much. Okay, now that we've got all of those colors figured out, we can switch to the smaller brushes, add some specificity to the shapes of light and dark. I'll always go in and overdo a shape so I can cut back into it, kind of like a sculpture. Gives me more control. Here's where it'll start to take shape a little bit. I'm still cautious not to add more than I need to.
I am using size twos now. Before I was using size fours. These are silver brush, Grand Prix, uh, bristle brushes. So size two, silver brush, Grand Prix. Good old bristles. Same brushes I would use with this traditional. Like I said, at, at this point, I'm not really gonna differentiate between the two that much anymore. Uh, between traditional and rod and mixable. To me, they, they're they the same. The cleanup is different and the handling is slightly different. Um, but you can use the same brushes for both of them. I'm gonna leave the light pretty flat because that's stuff that we can develop later on. And usually I have to layer things lighter because it's easier to paint light, dark into light. But in this case, they're gonna dry true um, and it's not gonna sink in, so it's not really gonna matter. Um, so I'll just go for the value that I want right away. I'm not gonna go for any impasto um, just yet. We'll experiment with that later. But I don't want to go too thick with the paint and then uh, it ends up taking longer to dry. That could happen with any paints. We're 10 minutes shy of an hour. Um, we've got a decent amount of stuff done. So maybe after the hour, we'll see. It might be a decent point to, to let dry. But like I said, it doesn't quite matter how I leave it. Because I know that I can return to it the next day and I'll be able to work directly into it which is one of the little minor differences with uh, Cobra versus other paints
slight little drawing things. Oh, question for everyone, for anyone that's that's here. What is uh, your favorite paint to use? I know it's a question I always ask, but we always get someone new. Do you like Winsor Newtons? Do you like Bold Holland? Do you like watercolor? acrylic, cobras, do you like gamblins, what do you like? I know what Ingrid uses, <laughs> but what does everyone else use? The Cobras. Hey Colin, thanks for answering. Lefranc. Oh, cool, cool. I'm not sure if I've heard of that one before. Thanks for sharing. Hey, Tipu. 
Welcome, welcome. So Colin, you wrote the francs are lovely colors. Let's see. For your go-to or basic Delar or oh the Gregorian. Awesome, awesome. I think I mispronounced that, but awesome. I've seen those two before. I think I've even tried some of them. Many years ago. Pretty good paints. So the drawing adjustments for the eyebrows, they're a little closer to the eyes. There's even a tad bit of light here that should be showing through, maybe not that much. And as I do that, I can easily just move this down very forgiving. Like I said, it starts to take form once we put in these smaller shapes. But still, I'm gonna flatten the lights out and leave room for us to build next time. I stuff I only tried Winsor Newton. You want to try Cobra? They're pretty good paints. Like I said, I mean, at at this point, to me, they they are just like using anything else. Um, it does take a little bit of time to adjust to it. It's very very um, easy to layer with it because you don't have to. The paints don't sink in very much, uh, so you don't really need medium for it. I don't use medium anymore, um, so it's easier to use in that respect. But I mean, if you are if you have access to a, a sink that you can clean your um, traditional paint uh, brushes with, or sorry, your traditional paints, uh, like clean it off your brushes is what I mean. Um, you don't need to use Cobra, but it does have a lot of advantages in that it's high quality paint and it's cheaper. 
unlike most things out there that are getting more expensive, um, it's really affordable. And I don't have to spend money on mediums. So, uh, like, I don't have to spend money on mineral spirits, which can, which can get expensive. Um, I don't have any flammable things in the studio. My puppy can be in here without any issues. Uh, my trick dog, that is. Oh yeah, yeah, Jerry's Art Aroma. But I also have uh, the links on Amazon. <laughs> so if anyone purchases anything from those links, I get a small reward from Amazon. So the links are in the description box of the video in case anyone's interested. Okay, so Like I said, just looking at the shapes, my main focus is on the shapes. Like I said, it doesn't sink in very much, but it does sink in a little bit. So over here, some of the colors have sunken in, but it's not a major concern. And when it dries, it's going to look exactly like that. Um, like I said, I've got another Rembrandt from not too long ago, and I haven't oiled it out or anything. Uh, and this is just what it looks like when it dries. So you can see this dark, on this canvas here, it's pretty much the same as the dark on the hair over there, so you, you can tell that it will dry like that. It won't sink in very much at all. As far as the drawing and all that stuff is concerned, I, the way I teach in the beginning, we do use a um, site size for um, my earlier projects. So you draw from a template using the same proportion as your reference. But then eventually you get towards something that, that we call comparative measurement, which is you're either scaling something up or scaling it down. In this case, we're scaling it up relative to what we see on the reference. Um, and it's more free in the sense that you, you didn't see me do any measuring things. Uh, you, you see the drawing, you, you see the big picture more so than you measure it. So yes, there's gonna be some drawing stuff that I'll end up correcting with color, but that's part of the process. I allow myself the uh, option to be able to do that. All right, so a few more minutes, then we'll call it, and then I'll be back on Wednesday. If we get a few more people on Wednesday, we'll bring Hugo. I have a whole little setup where he'll do some tricks for you. Unless you want him to, I can bring him out today. But he does have a YouTube channel now which I've pinned for you. I'm gonna make very uh, short comedy skits um, in, the, uh, in, in his first person. Very different from what you see me do. 
Yeah, Colin, let's see. Followed me for ages. Your style is very classical. I'd love to see you paint a portrait in American folk art style. Oh, cool. I have to uh, do further research, but uh, thank you for that. Thanks for uh, following me for a long time. Yeah, I'll look into the folk art. I'm pretty open-minded to um, different subject matters. Like, I just have to study them a little bit more. Basically, anything but abstract, um, I'm open-minded to. But here's another drawing thing. This usually happens. I'm gonna have to move the mouth up a little bit. So well, let's just do that now. It doesn't take very long. So make the upper lip big and project it up and get the light for the lower lip. Project that up. And get the dark underneath the lower lip. Project it up. And that's it. What was that, like three brush strokes? And we can move the mouth up. So don't panic. Anytime you see that you have to adjust the mouth for some reason, you can do it in three brush strokes. Or three shapes at least. Not a big deal. And of course, somebody has to pull me away from the painting. I will just keep on painting. So we fixed the mouse. We got in the big shapes of light and dark. Now all it needs is further refinement within the light. We've got somewhat of the dark under here and this might still be a tad bit too red. Um, but for the most part we've got it all laid out there. This should be perfectly fine to work on on Wednesday. So again, the schedule will be now geared towards the evenings, 6.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time to be exact. Uh, so hopefully those of you that are just getting off of work will be able to attend. Uh, we'll see. Let me know what you think. Okay, so that should be about good. This will be the point where I'll ask if there are any last minute questions. And of course I'll bring out Hugo because I always do. So while I wait for last minute questions, I'll bring our, our Shiba Inu, Mr. Hugo the Trick Dog. So he can say hello.
So here's Hugo. We wait for any last minute questions. It's just hanging out. Like I said, a really nice thing about the Cobras, I can have my puppy in the room and not have to worry about the mineral spirits or the medium getting into his face. So let's swap him over so you can see his little platform. Kind of sleepy. Good boy. Say thank you to everyone for watching. Come here, Hugo. Say thank you. Roll over. Hugo, sit. Shy. Show them you can walk in a circle. Reverse. Do that. Reverse. He's doing the bow. Come on. Reverse. Good boy. Come on. Walk forward. Limp. So that seems to be about it for today. Here we go. Thanks for hanging out with me, hanging out with Hugo. And we will be back on Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So again, let me know what you think about the schedule change. If you prefer it earlier, let me know. Um, I'm assuming that many of you will be getting off work um, and able to watch more of the streams at that time but I don't know let me know what you think once again thank you all so much I wish you the very best and I'll see you on the next one